Well, your sight glasses broke. Now what? Boiler U instructor Jude Wolf is going to show you exactly how to replace the sight glass today on the boiling point. A sight glass is a critical part of our boiler instrumentation. Being able to do a quick visual and see the level in the boiler gives us confidence that we've got water in there and it's safe to operate. Um, this sight glass has been leaking a little bit intermittently, so we're going to go ahead and change it out. And we should change out a sight glass anytime we see any evidence of thinning on the glass, of steam leakage, or if it gets too dirty we can't clear it by blowing it down, we want to change it out. But if we've got a leak on our sight glass, it'll actually show a false water level because the steam escaping. Um, but changing out a sight glass when we've got pressure on the boiler is something that we have to be very deliberate and careful when we do. So there's a safe way to do this, and I'm gonna demonstrate that. First, if we're gonna isolate a sight glass, especially if we've got a leak, if we close the steam connection first, uh, the leaking steam's gonna allow this water to rise and blow out that connection. So I'm always gonna open my drain first so that I can begin to depressurize the sight glass. Then I can close the water side and close the steam side and I can verify that these valves are holding. So these valves are secure and I'm gonna remove the sight glass. First thing I have to do is remove the protection rods. These are generally here just so that we don't randomly knock the sight glass out. Secondly, we've got nuts here to loosen. That one was pretty loose. And what we'll see, we've got rubber gaskets top and bottom and that's forming our seal. So we need to kind of work the glass up, get the gasket out of the way, and pull it down. And we heard a little crunching there. It's actually pretty easy to chip the sight glass when we're removing it. So I'm not gonna remove a sight glass unless I've got replacement glass and replacement gaskets. I always wanna replace both. I never wanna reuse a gasket. Now this is chipped, so how am I gonna tell exactly how long that sight glass needs to be? And I can show you that. So I've got a new piece of sight glass, and we immediately see it's quite a bit longer than we need. So learning how to cut sight glass effectively is gonna save you a lot of trouble, because what is our proper sight glass measurement? It's gonna vary depending on the brand and style of isolation valves. So the easiest thing to do is just cut it in the field. So what I wanna do is get a feel for how long that sight glass needs to be. When I install the sight glass, the top end is gonna go up into that valve and the bottom has to clear this brass. So I can simply make a mark, give myself an extra eighth of an inch or so. And when that's installed, it'll come back down and sit within both valves, but that just gives me a reference point for cutting it. You want to make sure that your replacement washers are the same inside, outside diameter as the originals. Um, these are available in different materials and sometimes we find that some people just have more luck with one type than another, but these have worked well for us here, these black rubber. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. This is red line sight glass. Um, and the red and white pattern give you a visual indicator of where the water is because of refraction will make the red line wider and it's just a nice tool to make it easier to see the water level in the boiler. This is also rated for high pressure. It's got the HP on there for high pressure. So this would be suitable for 150 PSI boiler, no problem. Um, and of course anything lower pressure than that. So this is the cutting tool that we like. Um, there are chain types. We 
I just have the best luck with this. Um, cutting glass is really about confidence and not over scoring the glass. So we want to do a minimum score at our mark and we're basically going to scratch or etch about a quarter inch mark in the side of the glass. If you overscore the glass and try to go all the way around, you're actually more likely to break it when you snap the glass. So to snap the glass, you put your thumbs opposite the score mark and just do a quick, confident snap. Yeah, so once I've cut this, I'm just gonna go over before I put the gaskets on it and make sure it fits in case I measured wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick fit up check. Yep. So as you can see, that actually sits up in there and then falls back down. And cutting it long like that gives me plenty of material up in the top for my gasket to seat. So I'll pull that back off and I'll get these gaskets ready. So the brass nut, its purpose is obvious. It's screwing up against that and compressing our gasket. But these brass washers, they actually do two functions. One function is they compress the gasket against the internal seating surfaces. The second function is it eliminates friction between my ring here and the gasket. So on some of these, you'll actually have, uh, some sets you'll have a little thin copper gasket, but in this case, we've got a beveled brass insert that's actually gonna help compress that. So I wanna put these gaskets on way higher then I'll want them so I've got plenty of room to maneuver the glass. So once I've got the glass in position, I just want to make sure that my gaskets are pushed down into position and then I want to make sure that my glass doesn't actually set against the metal in the bottom valve um, because I don't want metal on metal in this. The rubber is actually forming um, all the connections between the glass and the brass uh, and that's going to make it less likely to be in a, in a bind and, and crack on tightening or anything like that. So once I get these started, and I'll just turn these till they start to snug. I'll give the glass a little bit of a twist and I'll move it up and down so that I can verify the glass isn't resting on the bottom in that valve. Then I can hand tighten these, and oftentimes that's plenty tight enough to seal this. So now I need to valve this back in. Um, the proper order doing this is going to ensure that I don't spray water in my face um, if there's a failure. So I'm always going to open the steam first because that's going to preheat all the glass to the same temperature. Once I've got the steam open, I can close this and open the bottom connection as well. Now I've got a little dripping on my packing up here. That's not unusual because that has cooled down and heated back up. So I can just take a wrench, just give that a slight amount of turn. I don't want to over tighten it because I may need to retighten that a number of times in its life. Um, we'll open this the rest of the way. Open that the rest of the way. And there's our glass at its normal level. So we'll go ahead and put our guard rod, rods back in there and uh, we're good to go. Appreciate Jude hanging out with us and showing us how to replace that sight glass. Remember that if you do need a sight glass, you can always go out to BoilerWarehouse.com, the newly designed website, and we have made getting parts very, very easy. Come visit us on February 3rd, 4th, and 5th. We're going to be in Orlando at Ashray. You can see the booth numbers right down here. 
Make sure that you get by, get a free t-shirt. We've got some other little goodies that we're going to be giving. We'd love to see you. And as always, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, share the videos and go out and check out all the stuff that we've got out there. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.